Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope everyone is doing great, staying safe, and just doing amazing. It is 2021. <laughs> Anyways guys, so today I have an amazing video for you guys. But before I dive into that, I just want to say thank you to all my new subscribers. You guys are amazing. And to all my OGs them, ah, when I to do well for my body, thank you so much for sticking with me. I promise you guys there's going to be amazing content coming back to back back to back i have amazing content for you guys so stay glued subscribe share with friends and family even enemies share with all of them let them watch anyway so today's video is everything you need to know when you're traveling from nigeria back to the abroad specifically in my case it was from nigeria back to canada and i'm talking out of experience so everything i'm saying is going to save you from a lot of wahala so if you want to know then keep watching Hey, you, that, baby! Okay, welcome back, guys. So, like I said earlier, today's video is everything you need to know in regards to traveling from Nigeria back to Canada. Travel hacks, just so it's hassle-free. There isn't any wahala on the way. Guys, I'm going to be looking at my phone, oh, please, so pardon me, because I wrote down a couple of points that I don't want to forget. And one of the points that I wrote down, I better just say it to you guys. I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video, just as a bonus clip kind of situation. Is in the last video I did, which is everything you need to know when you're traveling from Canada to Nigeria, I found that lots of people found it useful, which made me really happy. And um, people had questions. So I have a little bit of update. It's not a lot. So I'm going to say it at the end of the video. So I don't want to do a whole new video just because of that. So please watch this video to the end um, as you might find that very useful. Okay, back to our today's topic. First things first, as per usual, is check your flight. <laughs> Check your flight to be sure that it's still flying. Check your flight to be sure it's not delayed. There is no last minute changes. Check your flight. So I flew with KLM and I'm so glad I checked my flight. Anyway, that's a habit for me. I always check just to be sure that there's no wahala or any kind of, I don't want to hear stories. I just want things to go smoothly. So I'm very proactive. So I checked my flight and I found that KLM canceled my flight. So immediately I had to call them and I found out that it wasn't even them that canceled my flight. It was the Mumu agent that I bought my ticket from initially that had canceled my flight. So what they did for me was to immediately rebook my flight, settled everything for me, got me the seats that I wanted, just made sure everything was on point for me. And they just alerted me that it would be good for me to keep checking just in case there's any changes in regards to KLM flying now from Nigeria to Canada or in terms of like the new COVID restrictions. So they just advised me to keep checking until my travel date. So they made sure everything was good for me on my app, everything was visible and all of that. So first point, this whole story, all I'm trying to say is that check your flight guys just to be sure that there's no last minute changes or surprises. That is number one. Number two thing here would be know what the new COVID restrictions or COVID rules are. In my case, I was traveling, I'm using KLM, so obviously I'm gonna stop at Amsterdam. So that was my only stop, then straight to Calgary. The whole COVID rules for me was the PCR test. So now Netherlands requires you to have a PCR COVID test done, whether you're transiting or you're not transiting or Typically it was for people who were visiting, but now whether you're transiting or not, you must have a valid PCR test. So that's number one. Then for Canada, Canada now requires you to have a valid PCR test. Initially, they didn't require that. They just needed the arrive can. But now if you're entering Canada, you're required to have a PCR test, not the other one, no, PCR test. So know what the rules and regulations are for your transit location, as well as your final location or final destination know what the covid rules are in most cases in most countries what i have found just based on my own research so please follow up with your airline and the transit country and your final destination please for most countries what i found is that 72 hours is the like safe safe period where they say your covid um, test should be valid for 72 hours not 120 not 96 72 hours is typically what they say so that's about i think three days they're about please do the calculation that's that's pretty much a safe spot for most countries like netherlands canada and all of that okay so just 
know what your transit location rules are and what your final destination rules are so that's number two point number three once you know what the rules are it's now time to go find the location to do your test so i live in benin city in edo state nigeria so i did my test at edo specialist there is another location that's quite popular in benin city which is called the lily hospital but they're quite expensive i think they were about 50 something thousand between 50 approximately let's just say 50,000 naira why those specialists was 27,000 I think 500 approximately so for me I found that one to be way cheaper because I'm just doing a test and I know I was already negative and I just needed it to travel so why would I be spending that extra money so I generally just went to a those specialist in Benin City they have um, I think it's on Sapley or so Sapley Road yeah they have a new building not the old specialist one or the new building the new adult specialist it's cleaner it looks more like a hospital not like the other specialist hospital it's not like that one so that's where I went to to do my test I'm gonna leave below a link for NCDC just so you guys can see all the authorized locations in Nigeria where you can have your COVID test done. So in Benin City, the last time I checked, there were two authorized locations, which is a dose specialist in Lily Hospital. Like I said, Lily Hospital is more expensive, so I went with a dose specialist and they got the test done for me. The rules will be just call them ahead of time, just so you know you have all the information. They typically do the COVID test by 2 p.m. So if you go there by 9 a.m., 8 a.m., 7 a.m., you will wait until 2 before they do the COVID test. So this is the reason why I say call them ahead of time so that you know exactly when you're supposed to come in for your COVID test but based on my own experience and based on the information that I know they usually start the COVID test from 2 p.m. And then the other thing that you should be aware of is that they will ask you questions just typical normal questions family nest of kin name address all of those things in your travel day because they need to know exactly they will advise you exactly on when you should have your test done just so it's still valid for the location that you're going to and like i said the typical save window that most of these places use is 72 hours so that's the typical safe window that they kind of calculate everything by so just be aware so that's it for benin city for other people like lagos and all of those other places emo all of those other places i think emo there's is it ever bright ever bright diagnostics or something like that i would leave the information of ncdc below so you go check it out and see what the authorized locations are to get your test done another thing is after you had your test done they're going to give you the certificate uh, at least that's what those specialists did for me they gave me the piece of paper in an envelope addressed to me once that is done now it's time for you to continue with your travel plans if possible please check in online just to avoid all the higgy haga in lagos airport guys hey, hey it is stressful i'm not even going to sugarcoat it it is stressful so if you can check in online please check in online just to avoid that extra step when you get to the airport another thing is measure your luggage <laughs> Guys, there will be stressors in that airport. There's no two ways about it. It is Nigeria and it is the Lagos International Airport. So measure your luggage if you can. Have your portable scale. Like I have my portable scale. I just use in measuring my luggage so that you know if you have extra luggage so that you know if it's 23 kg let it be just be 23 kg if you're on the higher class 32 kg let it be exactly 32 kg because if there's an extra addition point something these people will stress your life out it's not like in other places where they're kind of like you know oh they'll be lenient and all they will stress your life out and be telling you rules of things that you already know no nigeria once they're in power <laughs> you are literally the one that will be begging so to avoid all that unnecessary begging and tipping of people just measure your luggage 23 kg to 2 kg whatever that might be and if you have extra luggage measure your extra luggage ahead of time so that you kind of know how much you are going to pay the way nigeria works in nigeria the, everything is in usd or in naira so for me i had extra luggage and i had to pay i still have the receipt even 137 thousand naira hey god that thing rang my head then because i felt like i didn't exactly need to pay that but the lady was just a difficult person and maybe because i challenged her she had to show that she's the one in power and all right i challenged her and that's another thing i think i gave this tip one of the other videos that i did I'll, I'll leave it up here these people if you're not nice to them sometimes if you're even over nice to them they think that you are not there and they just be, begin to behave anyhow in my case i challenged her at first i was nice but when i saw that she was beginning to act very weird and acting like i don't know the rules i don't know my rights i challenged her so i, I guess that really upset her where she's like hey you must pay this money today no i didn't have a problem because 
you know I paid the money and whatever but just all I'm trying to say here is measure your luggages ahead of time just to avoid any stressors at the airport and avoid insults from modest people at the airport that's it you have extra luggage plan ahead of time have the money ahead of time to pay for your extra luggage know your rights no, you're right because Nigeria Airport, this is just a bonus addition to this video. I would say no, no bribery and corruption. These people will ask you for money at every corner of that airport. Me and my husband went to pay for extra luggage. My husband went to the washroom to pay. I was going downstairs. I couldn't wait for him. So I told the security guy who was at the place where they pay for extra luggage. And I told him, please tell my husband though that I'm going downstairs. And he's like, hey, who be your husband again? Now I went to Labi. And he resembled person where get money plenty for a pocket. So I laughed over it and I'm like, I don't understand. I'm like, hey man, no, I don't understand you. Guess what guys? Behind my back, this people went to ask my husband for money. So my husband paid them, not knowing that me and them did not have the agreement. They now told my husband that, oh, madam, say, make you, make you settle also, make you give us some money. And I'm like, how heartless can these people be? We just paid 137,000 naira. And these people were asking us for tip again. My husband now, doing goody goody everywhere, was busy sharing money everywhere. He now went to pay them, give them extra money. I was so vexed there. Eh? Anyways, that's just extra story on the side. And just let you guys know that in Nigeria, they will ask you for money at every location. They don't care whether you're spending money. All they know is that you give them to put in their own pocket. So they will ask you money at every location. I'm pretty sure that lady itself was even angry with me because I didn't bribe her or tip her. When you tip them, then they are more lenient and all of that. Anyways, that's just a side story. Once you get to the airport, your papers are going to be checked. First step is getting into the airport. Please remember that when you're entering the airport now, family members are not allowed, except those that are traveling. So only the travelers will be allowed into the airport. If you're bringing family, friends, whatever, all of those people to come with you to the airport, they're not going to let them come into the airport with you. Only travelers are allowed into the airport. And this is part of the whole COVID rules and all of that. Come early to the airport. I can't emphasize this enough. Get to the airport early because if you don't get there early, the line is long outside and they have these fans blowing you. The line is too long. So come early to avoid any wahala or lateness. Just come early. Come early, guys. Once you get into the airport, they're going to spray your bag with that thing that they spray with. They didn't even spray my own self. They will spray your bag with that thing that they spray with and will get you into the airport. I can't remember if they did um, the check for me again i can't remember but they'll do the spray your bag then once you get in your bags will pass through that thing that you used to pass through that check thing that it passes through normally before you get into the airport once you get into the airport there's another section i think where they open people's bags i, I can't understand these people man or i think that thing was not working <sighs> Anyways, that aside, once you get in, pass through that part, then it will be for them to measure your luggage. Once you pass through the whole measurement of luggage situation, it will be now time for you to first initial passport check. So that's where they will check you. The guy even forgot to ask me for my COVID test, for where he was talking anyhow. They will ask you for COVID test. Ah, Nigerians. That's how, another story. Sorry, guys. I know I'm just going all over now, but another quick story. The guy who just started talking anyhow, behaving rude, and he was like, eh, why your picture? Why your pass picture for passport can't be like, say you fat? May you not come they fat anyhow, may your village people not come recognize you. See, I see your fat for a side picture. And I was like, I found it quite offensive, and I'm like, I don't understand. I'm like, Ogami, you respect yourself today. I don't understand how you will see my picture because they cost me. You are supposed to check pass passport and give me my passport, check my papers and give it back to me, and let me be going to where I'm going to. Then he was like, eh, wait to be your name again. What is your name there? And I'm like, Ogami, you're with the passport. Check the name that is there. What are you seeing there? Nigerians. Then another lady, so I was at this point, I was like, hey, this Nigeria. I said, I now told the guy, I was like, I go get story to talk for this one, a Nigeria matter. It was like, eh, story to talk with for Canada, I be, and you won't go to the narrator. So I said, yes, so that people will know what to expect when they come to this airport. Then the other lady, or one lady that, one, one, I don't even know what to categorize her as. I don't want to just say anything so it will not be offensive here in YouTube. But some lady that I don't know her from anywhere, she doesn't know me from anywhere, she just dived into the conversation and she's like, and the country that you're going to, don't you know that Nigeria is 100 times better than that country? Don't you know? And I was like, Madam, sister, I don't know what you'll be, whether I'm Madam or sister. I'm like, I don't talk to you. Why you they pull my to inside my matter? 
I call your name. What it concern you concern me. And I says you can't lie the country. Me you day inside now. Why body the paper on a one person they come out for this country? Now go just but it go just a pinch you now. I said this your body so it go pinch you where we say they come out eh? you never see anything yet. She was like, eh, eh, this country, hundred times better. I said hundred times better. Now nothing they work for this country. I never get light. Nothing they work for this country. I said, you enjoy the country. Me, I don't come out. Rubbish. I was like, I didn't talk to you. Why are you talking to me? I didn't even I don't even know whether you are existing or you are not existing. Which one concern you concern me? Anyways, I'm so sorry guys, just a quick, <laughs> a quick story. Nigeria, eh, they will stress your life. Different things will happen. I can't even begin to explain to you guys every single thing that I went through at that airport. I was sweating like a Christmas goat. Like literally guys, I was sweating. I didn't even realize how hot I was until later. And me and Hobby were like, Jesus. Like I was... So after they finished checking the passport and everything, my own even forgot to ask me for COVID test. I have to remind the guy, won't you ask me? And I said, hey, give me the COVID test. Where is the date again you, you took the test? Ah, <sighs> Nigeria. Anyway, so ask you for your passport, your COVID test, any other documents that you have. Then after that, you can then check in your luggage. If you have extra luggage, at that point, they'll tell you to go pay for your extra luggage. Come back with the receipt and they'll tag your bags and give you all of the, you know, those little tags. They'll give that to you on your boarding pass. So that's pretty much that with that part. After your bags are checked in, then you can then go with your hand luggage and your handbag or your backpack. They are now, maybe it was just that they will, they are now checking the weight of, of hand luggage as well as your handbag or backpack. In my case, they checked that to know what the weight was. So like I said, after you finish with tagging your bags and they've moved your bags in, you can now go with your hand luggage and your or your backpack and your or your handbag and go to the next point which is the point of no return which is the official passport control so that's where they check your passports your documents to whatever country you're going to then they stamp your passports and after that you go through the other check which is where they check your hand luggage and your backpack and your laptop whatever your phones all of those things and your shoes take off your shoes and you go through that thing that you have to pass through where you raise your hand and they'll check you after that you go through duty free to your gate once you get to your gate you ask to at that point again they'll check your bag this time they'll open your hand luggage and your handbag and normal check it you know nigeria now they'll check everything once they finish checking they'll check your body again and they will tell you at that point that any cloth mask is not allowed into KLM, just a surgical mask. Which I found kind of weird because people had cloth mask the minute they got into KLM. In fact, I removed my surgical mask afterwards and put in my cloth mask and I was fine. I was perfect. I used my Edge Styles mask. In case you guys don't know, I'm going to put the link below. You can check there out for your mask, for your facial mask. I used that because I found out a little bit more even secure because it's three layers. After they finish checking you, then you go sit. Do some social distances sometimes. Sometimes they don't. After you seated there then it's time for you guys to board and they'll then go into the plane once you get into the plane then you now fly to Amsterdam or wherever your transit location is when we got to Amsterdam in fact, the plane was a little bit empty which was kind of interesting it wasn't as full as I assumed it would be so when we got to Amsterdam what they did is they didn't even bother us they just did the normal check and they didn't even make us throw our food out or any of that which was a little bit surprising so we had our food water they let us take everything in so when we got in no COVID test was checked or asked for it was later on when it was time to go to Calgary, just before that, there was a section that they would check your COVID test as well as give you their own declaration form, health declaration form and stamp it. So it's just basic questions like, have you had any symptoms and your COVID test and all of that. Once you fill that out, they'll stamp it and give it to you. So when it's time for you to board to Calgary, they will check your documents as per usual, your boarding pass as per usual. Then the new additional document that they check is your COVID test test as well as because Canada requires it right so they check your COVID test as well as declaration form once they check the declaration form at that point too they also do your temperature check so once they check your declaration form and all of that then you're good to go into the plane 
plane was very empty too. In fact, in the plane, they asked people, have you completed your arrive can? So one thing that you should be aware of is have your arrive can app downloaded on your phone. They'll ask you on the plane, have you completed it? If you've not completed it, they'll give you a piece of paper to have that completed manually. If you've completed it and you're good to go, once you get to Calgary, they're going to start announcing it. Your arrive can is what they need you to complete as well as your COVID test. So if you don't have the arrive can, they'll give you the paper again there to complete. If you completed the arrive can, and they'll advise you it's legal for you to have that downloaded and just complete it so it's easy. And if you've completed that, then you're good to go to the next step, which is basically declaration and passport control. So normal in Canada, we do the computerized thing, at least in Calgary Airport. After that, the next thing they do, that's where you do your declaration. One thing I want to say, very important information is declare the food that you carry because now they are prosecuting there is consequences if you don't declare and they find out that you're not declaring first off these guys know we're from nigeria we carry food all the time so declare because when i got there good thing we declared because when we got there they're like you're from nigeria so you must have a goosey and crayfish and i don't know huh <laughs> So declare everything guys, they're going to ask you. So declare your crayfish, declare your egusi, your magi. As long as you don't have live chicken, live fish, live snail, all those life life things, you're pretty much okay. Just declare what you're carrying. As long as you don't have anything that is livestock in there, you can declare your crayfish, they'll let you pass your egusi. If you don't declare, they'll either throw it away or there's other consequences. So declare what you can declare just to avoid any issues whatsoever. Declare your gari if you have gari and just explain it to them. You would be fine. There's no need to start lying. Just to recap there, going into Amsterdam, they didn't check anything, but leaving, they checked. Then we get to Canada, of course, they check things. They declare what you're carrying just to avoid any kind of wahala. Then once you go in, they're going to ask you if you're interested at least in Calgary because they're having a pilot program in Calgary where they're doing the rapid test. They'll ask you if you're interested in doing the participating in that. So I said I was interested. The reason why I was interested is because if you do the rapid test, you're negative. You can start moving around. You don't have to quarantine on any of that. So we did it. The process is long. They go through a triage, long process, registration, long process you stay longer at the airport so once they do the test they'll give you instructions to follow test results will come out typically within 48 hours in most cases it comes out earlier my result came out the next day once you're negative yours you can then move around however you'll be expected to repeat the test within six to seven days once you repeat the test and you're negative then you don't have to quarantine again whatsoever if you're positive and you're expected to quarantine for 14 days if you don't participate in the pilot program you must quarantine for 14 days if you don't quarantine it's considered an illegal offense so you're expected to quarantine once you get back to Canada for 14 days except you do the rapid test that's the pilot program and you are negative and you do it again on the seventh sixth day and you're negative then you're good to go about your normal day so that's pretty much it after that you can then go home and welcome back to Canada it is cold 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 it is cold when i arrived it was really windy and cold so <laughs> the driver is like welcome back to calgary and i'm like yes i don't arrive <laughs> anyways guys so that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm just gonna give you guys a bonus clip now just so you're aware you now i talked about it at the beginning of this video so quick quick bonus okay Now, the bonus um, information here is that when you're traveling into Nigeria, I remember previously your COVID test had to be 120 hours maximum. Now, it is 96 hours maximum. So, please calculate the time very well when you're doing your COVID test. Remember, it is a PCR test that's allowed into Nigeria. Do it to avoid any wahala. And in addition, when you're doing your repeat COVID test, remember, pick a location that's close to you. I think now there's more locations on the, on the side and like I said before in my previous video if the location doesn't work for you take it take the closest one to you then call them and ask them if you can take the test at one of the authorized locations and have the sample sent to them just communicate with them okay in my case when I traveled to Nigeria I didn't even get the results of the repeat test can you imagine they never sent it to me, but I knew that if I was positive, they would come and look for me. So they never sent it to me. So I, I knew I was negative anyways. So obviously I did the test again. 
uh, when I was living in Nigeria and I was negative. So all I just want to let you guys know that it is now 96 hours. Always call your airline. Majority of my friends that came to Nigeria, their flights got cancelled without them knowing and they had to go through stress. One of my friends missed an important event. So just guys, check, call your airline to find out what's happening. Uh, make sure you're doing the right test at the right time. Calculate it properly to avoid any kind of wahala. That's pretty much what I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've been hearing people talk about the 50,000 Naira COVID test. Guys, find a location that it is done cheaper at because I don't know why people be... Like, it's too expensive. Imagine people who don't have money in Nigeria. Who would want to do that COVID test if they're charging people 50,000 Naira? When minimum wage in Nigeria is not even up to 20,000 Naira. So, guys, all I'm saying is that there's locations that do it cheaper. Find that location, do your COVID test. And stay safe, guys. COVID is real. Travel safe. Use your face mask. Use um, hand sanitizer. Wash your hands. Just stay safe, guys. If you've had COVID before, just be mindful of other people. Stay safe, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please share it to someone who might need this video. Um, if you have any questions for me, please leave it below and I'll answer all of your questions the best way that I can. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe share like and comment i love you guys thank you for being here with me bye bye